Hello everyone, and happy Throwback Thursday, and the rotation leads us to a Star Wars review, and this one's on the 501st ATRT, which you're looking at, and the HHA-7 Starhopper from 2013, of course. <coughs> so on the front of the manual entry for the 501st ATRT, I have the Lego Star Wars logos, and the green and Yoda border from the time, and picture of the whole set in action, and choking hazard, and... And the set number 75002. And on the back, how to win on the online survey. Evil Win Kid, of course. And then add for Lego Club. Advertisement for some of the other sets from the time. And that of which expect for next, next throwback Thursday, of course. And then all the mini figs from the wave, from that wave, of course. And then little code that's used for the website, which is no longer valid, of course. And then all the pieces that come with the set, of course. And then the last building step. Now, first off, for the uh, final first ATRT. Okay, then. So first off, we must have a 501st Clone Trooper, of which first and only time we ever had of this, well, until 2020 with the 501st Battle Pack, of course, or first version of that, of course. But however, unlike with the ones in that set, this which has uh, blue arms instead of white, and also, and it, although the rest of which kind of similar, to that, but yeah. And also, this did also come in the uh, Z95 Hunt Hunter in the same wave, of course. And and suddenly, not at all in the other sets afterwards again, but yeah. And then underneath the which is the Clone Wars style version of the usual clone face, of course. And then next to which have a uh, have Clone Wars Yoda, of which wielding the green lightsaber and. Also, as for the head printing thing, or the head piece, which is kind of loose, but it's just on mine, but which is quite loose, but luckily that's due to age of it, but however, the uh, head, but the whole thing of which, same as it's been since 2009, or 2008 or 9, one of the first Clone War sets, but yeah, like the skull thing, still the same for that. But however, the torso printing, a little bit different than that one. But unless if you see both of them in person, you would know. And then last of which is a Senate Commando Droid, which everything in which, same as from the Battle Pack the year prior, and except for the face printing. So kind of, so a little bit of an update in just a year. That, but however, although it would be nice if there was an extra one of it in this set as well, but or maybe that could have been in another set as well. But and also they haven't been in any other sets after the, afterwards. Well, hopefully by now they could eventually. But yeah, and then backsides of each of them quite good for how they are, like quite fitting or matching to the rest of the clone troopers. But yeah, and of course with the back hood part of the Jedi cloak as well, but yeah, and that's about it there. And then next to which for the HHA-7 Starhawk. Oh, First off, have Cad Bane, of which I do exclusive version. That's the exclusive, well, the face printing of which kind of the same as the one that came in a couple of sets from 2010 but however this is 2013 so a little different but well both this and also the uh brim hat piece uh, same as that as that but interestingly it doesn't have the breathing apparatus piece like he did in, in the cabin speeder set from that time but luckily 
And of course, this last time we ever had of cat being, well, until the justifier in 2022, which which was a nice touch for that. And then and then next we have Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, which will undercover disguise version as being Raku Hardeen, which is fitting to this arc in the Clone Wars. And whereas the face printing quite neat and quite accurate to this to the show of course and also quite good torso printing and leg printing of which only figure in this whole set with uh, leg printing for that and then lastly is a Nikto card which I think might be related to the weak way race I am not sure And of course, wielding a spear piece with an axe on it. And however, the torso printing quite nice for that. And of course, this which you can definitely use on like castle mocks if you wanted, or castle figs and mocks or whatever. And then on the back back side of each of them, each of which have some nice back torso printing and also very slight uh, back head printing for Obi Wan, of course. And that's about it with all these figs here. And then lastly for the ATRT of which also include the Sniper Droidica, which build a which quite similar to most Droidicas, but luckily a lot larger than most of them. Like uh, and of course like this bottom section, same as most, and also the upper body part. But however the upper part is like dealt with a pair of curved slopes rather than a single curved slope. I wish to give it more extra bulk to it, and also a couple flap parts as well. Most likely to represent the other outer shelf parts for when it curls up and rolls, of course. And then to make it a sniper one has this long bar piece that outwards, probably to make it aim well, and as of course. And like every other uh, Lego fig droidica, is, it lacks the ability to curl up and roll. Well, so really, wish, hopefully someday they'll get to doing a, that, or make an updated fig that can do that. But yeah, and that's about it there. And now on to the. 501st ATRT, which, which as it gets from first glance, which may be kind of similar to the uh, original, to the later one that came in the uh, 501st unofficial battle pack set in 2020. But however, this is which long before that. So, and of yeah. And but luckily, this was its own set. Other than that, of course. Also, the sizing of which still kind of overdone for an ATRT. Well, until the more proper size of it, well, the proper sizing of it was in the uh, clone battle pack that came out a few years earlier in 2009, but but also did have the more proper size in the 2016 clone turbo tank, of course. So, this kind of an in between size, but yeah. So like, as for the feet of the leg section sections, as he has a lot of snot going on, like made of curved slopes and cheese slopes, and also these grill parts as well, and just acting as extra greebling, and also a couple plates on jumpers there. And then as for these uh, leg parts, of which the traditional uh, leg parts. Or, or at least ratchet joint bricks with little bits and dishes on them. Yeah, and then upwards of which, a couple more large dish pieces right up here, and also a couple plates stacked in there. And then as for these little technic bits of which, are like, if you wonder, are for any function? Actually not, just there for detail and look. 
and then to the far upper section, which just which is comprised of mostly like corner plates and also tiles that have a sticker saying Five O First on it to indicate that it's part of the Five O First Legion. <coughs> and also like other ATRTs, well, well earlier ones has a pair of jagged slopes but with stickers on them. Although kind of close to that of the uh, very first 2005 one. For that. And, and as for this upper section, of which has four little studs and also a pair of handlebars on there. So just enough to fit your eight or your 501st clone onto there, of course. Then also do have a little extra stud in there, mainly to put uh, put the blaster into, of course. And then the back side, which which is just a pair of, uh, of hanging brackets with these uh, car hood pieces on the sides, and also uh, bar plates on there, just kind of randomly. And also, what's kind of missing is a pair of hinge rods that are supposed to be on there, but fell off thing kind of lost but whatever so that is about it with these with the ATRT here and now on to the HH87 Starhopper right here so this is which a quite neat and interesting vehicle that we've never seen any uh, versions of prior or after for that only time they ever did this one and although some bits of which do kind of hold up to modern day Star Wars sets, but well, except for a few bits to it, which I'll go over. But well, yeah. But as for the front section of which, as you can see, so I need like on the front section, which is just a pair of these large curved jagged slopes with lost stickers on it. So lost stickers in this set, of course. And also with a pair of single studs from uh, wedge plates underneath that. And also do have a lot of jagged slopes going on since, even though not sure why there was a lot of jagged slopes on here. Maybe because this was a limited edition set and it was be like kinda brand new, but not, not like brand brand new. And also do have this, well, although it was early 2010s and uh, Jagged Slopes were still barely much around for that. And then also have this little candy piece, which we barely see much for that. And it's on this wedge plate above where you can like lift right on upwards and show the uh, cockpit area which have a little stickered tile piece or a cheese slope piece of which with the same symbol as the wings part which I'll go over soon and also enough room to like fit a fig into and close it right overwards and as for the wing sections which have which are mostly like bench plates and regular plates and tiles just stacked so, and of course the whole color scheme of like dark tan, dark gray, black, and lime green. Kind of a unique color scheme thrown together, but yeah. And it's the interesting pattern going on to there. And also a large uh, tile plate piece, but with this odd symbol onto it, of course. And then uh, an also neat thing that the wings can do is can like fold right on upwards. And there, it's in its landed position, and it rolled right downwards, of course. And then underneath both of them are these little assemblies with the dish pieces and curved slopes around. And also these hinge rods where you can, like, shoot out the spring load line, or the flip fire missiles. Since, of course, this was last year that flip fire missiles were, like, the most common bit to it. Then, of course, we... Like see them just once in a while on like micro fighters and things. So if this set were made nowadays, I would expect there to be a uh, sprinkler launchers in there, of course. And 
and as for these uh, top wing or tail wing parts again with that but just swivel back and forth that, uh, that's about it then <coughs> but as for the uh, back kind of part section which is just the tile pieces in dark tan going all the way downwards and this gray one is part of the main features which I'll show in a bit then to the back part of it which has these pair of uh, dishes and a, a trans neon yellow tile piece on there to represent the thrust part then the back part which is mostly just bricks stacked on bricks with a couple jagged slopes then and also you knows that part I mentioned earlier press on that and a little speeder bike drops down and how it goes like that is for that technic pin right in there and this has a couple of little stud bits on the sides to connect uh, on there so very nice clever uh, thought process of that feature of course but now as for the speeder bike here which kind of reminiscent of earlier other speeder bikes but also kind of unique shaping to it where it has like a little dish piece standing on the front part of it and a couple of like uh, bar bits to it <coughs> and of course and also you have a couple of vent bits on the sides of which and also a few studs to sit your rope wand mini fig on to a course saying fly right off like so and also how you can like and the best part is you can actually, you can actually attach it back in with him in it so he'd be ready to fly off or ride around on it of course Oh, also, what I forgot to do, forgot one thing. There's also a little comparison of the ATRTs, I wish. Like, compared to between this 2013 one and also the, uh, the later 2020 one, of course. Like, as you can see, like, very few bits have kind of changed in, like, eight years, of course. Except for like the toe kind of parts to it with uh, tooth pieces to it, and and also did has have a few warrant stickers around it. And of course, main reason that it didn't have the jacket slopes, of which is most likely to match up with the uh, bark speeder that was included in that set as well. And also the the antenna parts are on hinge parts instead of like sitting on slopes, of course. And also this extra bit right on there matching to that so nice to see that uh, continue on as well and also and kind of a bust that there wasn't any main features on this one for the cannon part but in which with an actual stud shooter which so it did get plenty of bit more with this new extra one of it and, and I guess that is about it there And now to officially the final verdict, or rather officially onto the final verdict. So overall, I think these of which are, of which quite cool, good, quite good sets for how they work. Well, for the file first ATRT, which quite good for how it is. Well, at least like for the twenty dollars that it was back in twenty thirteen, quite good for how it was. Like kind of good minifig selection and also a unique different build for the Droidica, of course. And although the at least until the uh, twenty twenty uh, battle pack version of it did come with also come with the Bark Speeder, of course. Since this which still i can still kind of forgive how this set is as of now but yeah
even though they was kind of bit out of shape for that, but at least you get plenty of good blue pieces to use for your mocking or whatever. <clears throat> and as for HHA7 Starhopper, which, which kind of quite a unique ship that we've never got to see afterwards, well, if there is to be a time for a remake of it, I think now would be the time. Although it was a quite neat arc in the Clone Wars with uh, Obi-Wan going undercover and such. And also this, which last time we got to have that end of Cad Bane. Well, until 2022, of course. And of course, the Obi-Wan fig. Nice one to stand out amongst the other Obi-Wan Kenobi figures, mini figs, of course. And also, if, if the whole HHA7 Starhopper was made today, I would expect there to be some more curved bits to it instead of the jagged slopes and obviously swing of launchers instead of foot fire missiles, of course. So the, they were kind of good for the times, especially, and also it, the features of it were quite great for how it was, like the dropping out of the bark speeder and so on, but yeah. So they, so again, both of which quite good prices that they both were at like 20 and 40 for that, even though nowadays I think it can still work out as 40. But yeah. And so now, if any of you still have these sets from back in the day, well, I hope you had some good memories of them. And for those of you who are still looking to get these sets, then I'd say definitely pick them up. eBay, Bricklink, Mercari, whatever. Still worth having for your Clone Wars set collection, but yeah. And that's about it with this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And thank you for watching.